Last week, I was having trouble implementing the Fresnel effect. That's when Griffin, the person behind this amazing example from the Bevy 0.8 release blog post, offered to help me understand their Fresnel implementation. Now, the Fresnel implementation they have is not a, the most realistic Fresnel. Bevy has a different Fresnel embedded inside its own WGSL scripts. But for what I'm trying to do, I'm not actually trying to implement Fresnel exactly. I'm trying to just get the effect of a Fresnel that I can then manipulate for my own creative purposes. So what is the Fresnel effect? Basically, the TLDR is the Fresnel effect is this outline around each of these spheres. That is, the closer you are to a grazing angle, the more light you're going to see. Each of these spheres has a face at various positions on the sphere. For example, the face right here in the middle of the sphere is going to be directly pointed at us, whereas the face all the way on the right side here is going to be exactly flat and not facing us at all. It's going to be perpendicular to us. So the Fresnel effect then is what gives us the reflectance strength as these faces start turning towards us, which is what gives us this gradient of the color on the outside edge. As the faces turn towards us, it gets weaker and weaker and weaker, and then it's zero at the middle. In this case, I've chosen to mix the color yellow on the outside with red in the middle for kind of a star effect, if you will but we'll build this up from scratch. We'll start with the normals. In this case, what we've done is we've taken the world normal and I've normalized it. Now, I'm not sure that we need this normalized because what I believe happens is that this world normal is already normalized. But since the original code Griffin used and the explanations that we're using used normalize, I'm going to leave it there. In this case, all I've done is taken the normal and applied it with an alpha value of one on every one of these spheres. And you can see that the normal changes depending on which piece of the sphere that we're looking at. Since we're in a fragment shader, we can think of those as say pixels on the face of this sphere or groups of pixels on the faces of these spheres. So for any given collection of pixels, the face on the sphere or the area that it comprises on the sphere is going to be facing a certain direction. If you think of it as a plane, if you think of uh, the way that you can get the tangent to a sine wave or something like that, then we will have a bunch of arrows coming out of these spheres at different points. And if we take those as values from negative one to one, then we can calculate the direction that those faces are facing at any given point on these spheres. So if you look next to these, I have a red cube in the positive X direction, a green cube in the positive Y, and a blue cube in the positive Z direction. So if we think of this normal as an RGB color, we can translate that pretty directly to X, Y, Z. So if R is one, that means we're probably talking about this face on the right, as long as G and B are zero. And if we turn the cubes, we can see that that is in fact true. The reds are all the way over here. The blues are in a certain area. The greens are in a certain area and so on. So basically the normal is the direction that the faces on the sphere are facing when we go to render them. Here's a visualization of the normal values split into X, Y, and Z components. On the left-hand side, in the top row, you can see the X, the middle is the Y, and the right-hand side is the Z. If I rotate this, you can see that the back half of the Z component is dark, while the front is light. Same thing for the X and the Ys. Now, the top representation is missing a little bit of data, right? So this is not a number from uh, 0 to 1. This is a number from negative 1 to 1, but we can't represent that color. So what we've done instead is taken the absolute value so that the negative one on the left and the one on the right both end up as white with zero in the middle being black. So since we're only looking at the X coordinate on the left hand side, as you go around this circle, you can see increasingly that when X is one or negative one, that is when the X component of the normal vector is pointing to the right or to the left, we have the full value. So we have the one or the negative one. And when it's facing us or when it's at zero, we get the black stripe around our sphere. Now remember, these are coordinates in world space. These are world space normals. So if we move the camera, this doesn't change because the position of the cubes in space is not changing. Zero, zero is somewhere like right here in the middle. So you can see that all of the normals for the X on the left, the Y in the middle, and the Z on the right correspond with these cubes as we've placed them in relation to each of the spheres. So we've got a positive X, positive Y, and positive Z, as we talked about before. 
Now these normals are super important because the Fresnel effect is based on the sort of angle of incidence or like how close the faces are to facing us. As a quick aside here, the code that I've written for this WGSL takes the normal and uses XXXYYY or ZZZ or XYZ for pulling the values out of the vector. This is called swizzling if you want to look it up later. Now, if we move forward, we can see kind of a little bit of a marbly texture here. Well, I'm going to call it a marbly texture, but it, it looks like it's actually a sphere in the world and it's got a little bit of shading to it. In this case, what we've done is we've translated the world position from the view perspective, subtracting the world position in the actual world coordinates, which are different. And we've normalized that into a unit vector from negative one to one. So what we've done here is we've taken basically the camera position and we've subtracted the world position of the fragment that we're rendering from it, which gives us a vector from the fragment to the camera. We've then normalized that to be representable from negative one to one because we just kind of need values from negative one to one. So V for us is the vector from the fragment on the sphere that we happen to be rendering at the given time to the camera. The fact that this vector is pointing at the camera is really important for the Fresnel effect because if we think back to the way the circle was rendered before, it wasn't rendered in world space. It wasn't rendered with the outside edge pointing a different way. It was pointing towards the person that was viewing or the camera that was viewing the object. So now what we've got is we're rendering some fragment on the sphere. We've got the normal, which is the direction the face is facing in world space. And we've got the view, which is the direction from the fragment to the camera. If we take the dot product of the normal, which is facing from the center out of the sphere and the view vector, which is from the fragment to the camera, we get the angle of difference between them. So what that means for us is that a fragment that is pointing directly at the camera is going to have an angle of zero because there's going to be no difference between the normal coming off the face and the view that we've taken of the sphere. But as we go around the sphere towards the edges per se, the normal is going to be pointing more and more away from the camera, which means the angle is going to get bigger. If we use that angle to draw colors onto the sphere, this is what we see. And if you're thinking, hey, that looks a little bit, you know, white all the way around, I'm not sure I can see a difference. Let me blow this out for you and see this is what white would look like across the entire sphere, whereas this is what we actually get when we have the Fresnel and the angle applied here. So basically, we've defined the color on each of these spheres as the difference in angle between the normal, which is facing out from the sphere, and the view, so from the fragment that we're rendering to the camera. And if we turn this all around, we can see that we get the same thing all over the place because we are now doing the calculation uh, ba based on where we're looking at the sphere from. Now the Fresnel itself is the inverse of the n dot v or the angle difference. So what we do here is we do one minus n dot v, which is going to be our number from negative one to one, and we clamp that from zero to one. So we end up with what is effectively a dark interior and a white exterior. Now remember, we're using the Fresnel value as a copy three times, which is why we're getting white at the max value and black at the uh, zero value, because zero, zero, zero is the color black and one, one, one is the color white. So now that we've got the inverse of the angle difference, basically, we can use power and multiplication in the same way that we used power and multiplication for our sine wave in the candy cane shaders to increase the sort of angle at which we transition from one to the other and how much of the value is applied. So let's let's see what these uh, differences are. So if I add 20 or I multiply by 20, you can see that we get a much thicker Fresnel border. But if we have two, it's a much thinner Fresnel border. Similarly, if I bump this up to something like 13, you can see that the transition is very stark. And if I bump it back up to 20, it still doesn't come out as far as it used to because the power is pushing it so far uh, and making that transition so stark. So we can play around with these values as much as we want. The nice thing about Bevy and the sort of hot reloading that we have is that we can just kind of change these values and see what happens. 
But for what I'm doing, I think I'm going to use something like three and then sort of a thickness, if you will, of two. Uh, I probably will, when I move back to the shields, actually change this a little bit because what it looks like on a black and white sphere is not what it looks like when you have a hexagon, say, shield. And then we can use that Fresnel value to do whatever we want, right? We've got this like kind of mock Fresnel. We've got the little rounded exterior. I've got two colors here, which I've named red and green, which are horrible names because this one is red, but this one is uh, red plus like half of green. So a VEC3 of RGB, where R is one, G is zero, G, B is zero, R is one, B is 0.5, and uh, B is zero. And then we're using the mix function, which is from the WGSL spec. We're taking the red color, we're taking the uh, green color as we're calling it, and we're using the Fresnel value as the value with which to mix the two colors. So on one end of the spectrum, we're going to have pure red. And then as the Fresnel moves to zero, we're going to have pure like red green, which is going to come out as this yellow. So in this way, we can then apply this to say the alpha value, which is what I'm going to do for the shield shaders that we've been working on. So that's the overview of sort of this mock Fresnel and how it works. To run through that one more time, we get the world normal vectors, which are the vectors pointing out of the sphere at all places. So you can think of this as like the sphere is surrounding a center point inside of it and the normal vectors are pointing out from that center point through all of the edges. And those are all of the vectors that come shooting off of the sphere itself. So they're the directions that all of the faces on this sphere, whatever those faces are, would be facing. We then get the camera position and we subtract the world position of the sphere from that. And we get a vector from the fragment that we're working with to the camera. So now we've got the direction of the fragment in world space and we've got a vector from that fragment to the camera. By doing the dot product on these two vectors, we can get the angle between them. So for something that is pointed directly at the camera, both of those vectors are going to be in the same spot. So we'll get the number one. For the edges, we're going to get a face that is perfectly perpendicular to the camera at some point, but the arrow for the view vector is still going to be pointed from that fragment to the camera. So we'll have quite a wide uh, difference and we'll get zero for that. And then as they point away from the camera, which we don't really care about that much in this example, uh, they're going to be negative one. Then the Fresnel effect itself is actually taking that value and inverting it. So instead of having the positive values in the middle of the sphere, we want the positive values on the outside of the sphere so that we can use that to manipulate whatever color or whatever we want to apply. And then once we actually have the value that we want, we can manipulate that value and how it's formed using uh, the power and multiplication functions on that value. Once we have our manipulated Fresnel value, we can then use it to mix two colors together. We can apply it to the alpha setting. We could do whatever we want with it. Now, it's important to mention that this is a mock Fresnel value. It's something that I'm using for creative purposes, and it gives me quite a bit of control over how this value is applied. But Bevy inside of the WGSL files also has an uh, actual Fresnel implementation that returns an achromatic return value because in actuality, when you're trying to render realistic renderings, the R, G, and B values for how much light gets reflected at a certain position are different. So that's what achromatic means. But for us, a single value is fine and the strength is good enough. So that's how you get what is effectively a Fresnel value in Bevy 0.8 and WGSL. Now, one more thing I would like to mention before we leave, uh, the Bevy basic camera in the repo is directly pulled from Griffin's original camera control for the example that they did for the Bevy 0.8 release document. So this click and drag here is something that they implemented and I copied because I found it very useful. So maybe tomorrow we'll try to apply this uh, Fresnel effect to our shields now that we have it actually working. Uh, there is actually one more or two more um, issues with the shields that we would need to fix even if we were going to take this approach. So that's for another video. And I hope this helped you understand Fresnel. Um, I think that I'll do maybe a more polished video on Fresnel in the future with a little bit more graphical <laughs> explanations. But I hope that this helped. The code and the links to both Griffin's demos and this demo 
are going to be in the description. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments.